There he is. Here he is. Yep. Hurry up. Look at that net job. <laughs> it's August and now it's time to do some crabbing and we've never seen the crabbing be this good before. The crabs are there and they're aggressive. We sat in one spot for about 30 minutes and we didn't move an inch. We kept throwing lines out with chicken on them and they just kept coming. We're going to show you what we did to catch them and I hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, today uh, we're going to do some uh, fishing for some blue crabs. We call it fishing because they're actually going to use lines and bait to catch them and then as they get up to the boat we'll net them and you'll see in the video here in a minute um, but basically what you could do what it, all it takes it doesn't take a lot of equipment or anything to do this you just need a long handled crabbing net and you need you can buy these uh, type hooks that are weighted with the lines on them just go down to your lap, local tackle shop eight shop and um, you can pick them up they're very inexpensive even the net's not a lot of money either so um, so what we do is uh, grab one of these and then we like to use ch chicken chicken wings um, doesn't nest we have here Bell and Evans <laughs> chicken wings we've got a little expensive on our chicken wings but um, I like to use chicken wings because chicken wings go on to the onto this pretty easily and more importantly and you just thread this thing on there and just net it that's all there is to it and toss it overboard um, but chicken wings where we like chicken wings or any kind of other rock any kind of other bait that's thin you want something that the crabs can grab onto and hold really well because they're pretty aggressive they'll grab it and they'll hold it well so if you use a big piece of bunker they'll slip off i found and they don't stick well so small pieces strips of bait you know something like that that that's good enough you don't necessarily have to use chicken wings but um that's pretty much all there is to it and uh hope you uh enjoy the video if it's something you like, hit the like button. And uh, if you want to see more content from us, please subscribe. Oh, yeah. That one's probably got one, too. Oh, that's a nice one. Yeah. Now that's oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. a good one. The keeper. Get the net. As soon as I scoop it and you see I got it, get that thing out of there. This one might have one too, Jake. Get me, get me, get me, get me. Grab that, grab that, buddy. Grab that. There you go. You didn't grab it. You didn't grab it. Now he's in the wire. You got a zip in the wire. All right, let go, let go of him. Trying to get me. Yeah. Dude, they're all tight. Remember, I gotta get below you. Watch this line. Got one here. <laughs> okay, watch this guy. Oh my god.
Got one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Those are the tough ones. You gotta get them up. Now. Okay. Hurry up. There you go. Let him swim it. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, that's five inches. It's like as soon as you check the line, it's like every one, the next one has another one on it. I've never seen it this good. That one. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. It's like a Chinese fire drill. I can't even get all I can't even get all the lines out in time. That's good. Get him up and away. Good toss up. Good toss up. I need some more jigging. More jigging. Yeah, I got another one for you. <laughs> Dude, I've been working on this one line. We're working on this one line for 20 minutes. I just threw it out. <laughs> the one with the knot on it? That one has a knot in it. Big boy. Yeah, I lost track. I just threw that out. <laughs> There's the knot. No, that's the knot. It's a battery. You throw it anywhere, man. This one's got to be tight too. Got to get that, get that one. Dude, we're gonna be done in about a half an hour. Got the knots in that line. Yeah, they will swim. When the current's scrap, when the current's going good, they're pretty aggressive. Yeah, <laughs> this is insane. Downside is I should be on the other side of you, but that's okay. Wow, look how aggressive they were being. They were not that aggressive last night or the other night. That thing almost let you take it out of the water. Man, that's a big one too. Ah, mm. <laughs> uh, see, that's why I gotta get behind you. I keep saying I gotta get behind you, and then I didn't. Losing one is like nothing. Yeah, I don't. I don't like. Still, I don't like losing them. I want them all. I'm trying to get under the boat. There he is. Here he is. Yep. Hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that net job. Yeah. yeah baby.
So before you start to uh, clean these things, if they're still alive, what you can do so they don't zip you is just boil some, uh, you know, a pot of hot water. You can put a lot, just a little, you know, a little bit of hot water, and just pour it on them in the bucket. They'll pretty much die almost instantly. And then you have to worry about these big guys zipping you. Um, so anyway, so how you go about cleaning them is uh, we just take them over, flip them over, just get your finger under that right there, bring this back, and then basically all you're gonna do is what I call pop the top, pull it apart. I try to get it so that the guts come up and out as much as I can with it. That didn't work out too good, but if you do, if sometimes the whole gut pile will come out right in the shell itself, and then you just wanna clear off the lungs on each side. out of there take their front eyes unfortunately you're taking their face off and then you can get your finger up underneath there get as much of these guts out of there as you can the one thing you want to do is what I've been doing is I pop my thumb in here and get those little pocket of guts in there and then the same thing the other pocket and then from here you can rinse it out with your fresh water or in this case Jake and I have a bucket right here that we just rinse it out. Get as much guts out of there as we can. Again, I'm going to sweep that back pocket with my thumb. Get those little gut pockets out of there. And there's your clean puppy. Chow time. Hi guys, today we're going to be making a riff on a clam bake. Uh, the boys went, as you saw earlier, and got a whole bunch of crabs. And so we're going to do a crab bake, and I'm going to make little foil packets, and we're going to do it out on the grill. But it's raining today, so we're going to prepare them inside. So some of the things you're going to need are um, crabs, obviously. Um, I like, depending on the size, I like to put about um, two per packet because um, I'm gonna have shrimp as well. So I'm gonna put shrimp and crab, but you could use any kind of firm white fish, like cod or haddock or something that you've caught um, in cubes and put that in there as well. But this is what I have for today. So, um, and we're gonna do red potatoes. Um, I like red potatoes because they're firmer and when you put them on the grill, they won't get really mushy. Um, and you need to slice them into about quarter inch slices. And we're gonna have some corn on the cob, which I've uh, husked and cleaned them and cut them into thirds. Uh, we have some lemon slices, olive oil, and this is uh, not traditional, but um, it's garlic butter. I've just added a little bit of pepper to it. I'm gonna drizzle that on top. And then this is Old Bay seasoning that I've I, um, added some dried parsley to. I had to make my own, which you can do if you don't have any, and just look for a recipe online. And then you're gonna need, I recommend heavy duty foil, and I'm actually still going to do two layers of it. Um, if you have one layer foil, uh, I would maybe quadruple it because your little crab legs are pokey and they might pop a hole in it and all that delicious juice that simmers on there will fall right through and you don't want that to happen. So I do two layers of that, but if you didn't want to waste all the foil, depending on how many you're making, you could put everything layered in a um, high sided pan and do that on the grill as well. So. So let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm going to season the shrimp that I've already peeled. You can leave the peels on, but I didn't wanna do all the work when I'm eating it. I just wanna eat it. So I'm gonna take some of the um, Old Bay seasoning and I'm gonna sprinkle it on here. And then a little bit of the garlic butter just so that um, these get flavored because these are gonna be sitting on the top of the packet because they're, they cook the fastest, so you don't want them to be in direct contact with the heat. So you just need a little bit because we're gonna put more seasoning in the packet as we build it. So this, this goes a lot faster if you have everything prepared ahead of time. So we'll just put that aside. 
I just have to slice up my last potato. And you could do this ahead if you have company coming um, and just put these slices in some acidulated water, which just means just squeeze some lemon juice in there and then it won't brown. You keep it on the counter, put it in the fridge, and that's that. So get started here. You do want to drain these though. You don't need all that extra water. I don't, I'm not gonna pat them dry. They'll be fine. So the first thing you wanna do is put a little bit of olive oil in the base of your foil. And then you wanna put the thing that's gonna take the longest to cook in the bottom. So that's your potatoes. So you wanna put about the equivalent of one potato in each packet. So I'm gonna say that's about six or seven slices. And then I'm going to season every layer. So you wanna just take a little bit of Old Bay. You don't need a ton. And then the next thing that takes the longest is the corn. So everybody wants about an ear of corn. So you can put two to three in each packet. Put a little Old Bay. I will say that some clam bakes or crab bakes, you they ask for some type of spicy sausage. I don't happen to have that right now, but if you did have that, you would put that underneath the potatoes. So then we're gonna take our crabs and depending on the size, uh, you wanna put two or three. Maybe this is a little guy. So these have already been cleaned and you can use, you can catch them and then freeze them and use them that way. I'm gonna put three in this one because these guys are little. And then, or you could, you got all these little legs that fell off, you could do that as well. Just, you, if you've eaten crab before, you know that there's not a ton of meat on there, so you gotta work for it. That should be enough for one person. And then we'll put about six or seven shrimp and put those, Try to get those to sit on the top. So like I said, these, these are little guys. They're gonna cook pretty fast, but they're gonna be at the top of the pile. So then you just wanna do some more Old Bay. And then I just take a couple of spoonfuls of the butter. And what will happen when this cooks, it'll make all this juice in the bottom and put a couple of lemon slices on top. I'll make all this juice in the bottom and then you want to take some nice crusty bread, maybe a ciabatta and toast it up. You don't even need any butter on it or olive oil. And you wanna dip your bread in all the juice that's gonna end up on the bottom pile. So here's the tricky bit. To try and keep those shrimp on the top. I just, Fold the two, the top layers down first. You do want to keep a little bit of air at the top for heat flow. And you really want to make sure you get the sides really well so that your juice doesn't pop out. So that'll do it. You could add a little bit of white wine, dry white wine in here if you wanted to, just, so, just a, maybe a tablespoon or so per packet. Uh, that would be good too, but it's not necessary. They'll taste really good without it. And there you go. That's one a packet. And then you just go ahead and assemble the rest and then you go pop them on a grill and I'll meet you out there. Okay, here we are out the grill. As you can see, the weather did not cooperate. So we're just gonna go ahead with it and do it in the rain. So what you wanna do is uh, heat your grill up and have it at a medium heat. You don't want it too high because the potatoes will burn. We're just gonna stick these on here and it'll take about 30 minutes. All right, and we'll check back with you in 30 minutes. Okay, we're back in the house where uh, we're not getting rained on anymore. So typically I just serve this, I just leave the packet right on a plate. Everybody can un unwrap their own um, packet. And then 
a must. You have to get some nice crusty bread and serve it. Because if you can see down there, there's all that really yummy buttery juice. And you use bread to soak it up. And, and you've got easy cleanup. So there you go.